Hey everybody, how you guys doing out there? And welcome to Game Gallery. Again, I'm sorry for our tardiness. <clears throat> there has been a lot of redoing in the Wizard's Tower. Um, and I mean like a lot of redoing in the Wizard's Tower. I'm Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying hey, how you guys doing today? So yeah, I've got the cameras in different spots. I've got, um, I've got various things. And, um, in various different spots and unfortunately I'm flying solo today uh, we don't have the dig dugger now with us you know spring is a really really funny time <laughs> it's a really really funny time um, we've got so many changes in schedules um, daylight savings just came dude it has been a thing but I want to thank you guys for showing up today this has been pretty awesome and again I so apologize on so many levels for the tardiness that we have going today. All right, so now that I've said all of that jazz, um, today on Game Gallery, um, I have also decided that I'm going to start drinking more coffee um, while we're broadcasting because I don't care about that much professionalism. Ah, isn't that fun? So yeah, um, well, I want to give you guys a little bit of an update. This is, again, going to be a shorter show because there are more appointments and all that stuff happening. So, what we're going to be talking about today is yesterday. All right, Yesterday was actually pretty cool and pretty awesome. If you guys um, didn't have a chance to tune in yesterday, you should totally, totally check us out Um at twitch.t or not twitch sorry go to the youtube channel actually go uh go on over to the youtube channel or back in the decks youtube channel just uh give a look for our bid p but you know you guys should be subscribed already i'm just kind of saying um yeah that that's that's a real big thing but uh yeah if you guys actually head over to the weekly one shot or head over to um yeah, where are we at? Where are we at? Here we are. Yeah, right there. It's the 14-hour ago video. Yeah, it's four hours long because, ooh, look at that. Um, we ended up um, running a good one-shot session. We had some good players. We had um, an interesting plot line. And um, I'm going to be frank with you right now. Just skip the first two hours. I've been trying to edit and re-upload and all that jazz. So, um that's a real thing that's a real thing and we've been doing that stuff but yeah yesterday's game went really really well um let's see i was thinking um while i was trying to get everything up and running um yeah while i was trying to get everything up and running today like what amazing insights can i give people what what is it that we can that we can put up there and say you know hey um, when you're running a game, blah, 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 and then I realized this is Twitch, and that's a YouTube video, so I'm not going to be doing all that, um, for too long today, although I'm probably going to end up doing that, and I was thinking about, um, well, I've been taking a few animation classes, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, what is he doing with his hands and his hair, yeah, I'm just, I'm all disheveled today, so we're just gonna, ooh, yeah, look at all that there, all right, cool, yeah, and, um, yeah, I've been thinking about taking some animation classes to give you guys, like, some really cool little cartoons to be like, yeah, so when you're running a game, blah, 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 um, but we'll see, we'll see, um, and I know we haven't actually had an episode of, um, of, what is the term I'm looking for, we haven't had an episode of a lot of things lately because I have been so so, so, so swamped, um, <clears throat> yeah, um, again, this is, this is the reason, um, this is one of the reasons that I'm always pushing the Patreon and the GoFundMes and stuff like that, opening up the nerd clubs, um, or the geek clubs and community centers and school stuff and things like that you know showing them little things like this now this this right here ladies and gentlemen is a meeple and this was stupid easy to make um 
stupid easy to make. It just took a printer, a penny, and a coffee stir stick. And that was one of the things that I've got on the docket to show kids how to do um, for their games and stuff so that people don't have to fight over who gets to be the car or the top hat in Monopoly. It's it's one of the things I like doing. And um, one of, you know it doesn't take a whole lot of time. All it takes are a few office supplies that any parent can, you know, acquire at their place of business or someone's place of business and if you gotta buy it you know, it maybe cost like a quarter or something over at the FedEx store or the UPS store or something like that but um, that's kind of like something I'm saving for hobby haul for the video for that for the kids that I can't get to physically you know kids of all ages by the way so yesterday we had a really 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 fun um, one-shot game which I was really happy with at the end of it um, yeah, a lot of people say I shouldn't do this on screen, and generally I don't, but, again, it's been a rough morning. So, or, it's afternoon, Pacific time, which means it's probably late afternoon, your time. I get it. Um, but yeah, so, <clears throat> today I'm really just going to talk to you guys about the game that we had yesterday. Um, Yesterday we had one new player, an intermediate player, and an advanced player, and it was very cool. I got to apologize to some of the people watching because I was forgetting um, a lot of the rules that came down to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, primarily because I'm working off some major sleep deprivation. Um, <clears throat> but there was another player at the table to help correct all that stuff, and that is why I want to talk about yesterday's game. Um, there's a lot of people that see this stuff on YouTube and on Twitch and, you know, there's this impression of once you get a camera, you've got to be such an expert that you can write your own book on stuff to talk about the stuff you got to talk about. And when it comes to running a game, okay, running a game, it comes with this fantastic title. It really is a fantastic title. I like it a lot. The title is Dungeon Master or Game Master, you know, and it gives this impression that we've gone to some sort of slogwarts school of games and wizardry and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, I did go to school for wizardry, but um, I didn't go to school for games. Okay, I'm not um, running an RPG has two parts that's for video game parlance, parlance the computer and the player, and that's fine. Um, but to run a game, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to have a little more general knowledge um, than most of the players at the table. And I promise you, there's always going to be one or two people that have studied the book a little more than you have. Primarily because of time or um, their availability at stuff. I know when I was growing up, or most of the time in my adult life, when my friends are like, Oh yeah, we're going to be running this game and blah blah blah. Um, it would be cool, but I would very rarely have the time to study up on all the rules and all the intricacies, or as we say in the geek community, I didn't have time to break the game, because life got in the way. I had to work, I had to pay my bills, I had to clean my house, you know, there was always something else that was there, but somebody at the table could always, um, kind of push me through, you know what I mean? And that's part of the camaraderie of gaming. A lot of people don't even want to try to play a game because, oh my god, they're, I'm afraid of looking stupid or I'm afraid that I don't know what I'm doing and all that stuff. And I say to people all the time, and I'm saying to you right now, um, it is folly, absolute folly to expect yourself to have mastery over something that you just picked up a day or a week or something ago. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, okay, you don't know what you're doing. Not a big deal. You, you, you don't know because um, you're new. And being new isn't, um, what is the term I'm looking for? Ow. Yeah, being new isn't a character defect. It's just a matter of timing. <laughs> That's all. You know, um, I remember when I was in my 20s, I used to say I didn't have any control over when my parents had sex, so stop getting on my butt for being young, you know. And I stand by that. I stand by that. Yeah, I make a lot of fun of young people myself because, you know, sometimes I can be a bit of a jerk, and I own that, and I'm trying to be better. But, um, but 
being the new guy at the table, I know a lot of gamers want to try and do some hazing, you know, that that whole thing. But um, but that's fine, you know. Um, a little bit of hazing is par for the course, but it doesn't have to be. We are working on changing that, even to this day. That's one of the things that we're working on, and that's one of the reasons that we're here. But if you don't really know what you're doing, just be honest about it, you know, in all things. Just be like, look, I'm not a gamer, or I'm not this kind of gamer. I'm kind of new, and in all honesty, I need some help going through this, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Because, yeah, I know... When you go on YouTube or you go to a game store and you get these people that talk all the time. Well, I've been gaming since 1983 and way back in my day. Honestly, when I was growing up, we all had those relatives. And I treat some of the older gamers, even when I'm being that guy, um, just like I trap my older relatives. That whole, yeah, dad, I know. <coughs> I know. Uphill both ways. You had to make your own dice out of clay. I, I get it. I get it. I totally, totally get that. You know, and just look at them and understand that what they're saying <coughs> is really them trying to feel better about themselves and set your boundaries. You know, just be like, look, when you say stuff like that, you make me feel like you're attacking me. And it doesn't make me feel good, so could you refrain from that kind of speech toward me when I'm here? I'm new. I don't know this. I need help through. Um, if I were to put you in a helicopter right now, <coughs> you probably wouldn't know how to fly it. So have the same patience with me that a helicopter teacher would have with you, okay? Unless they are a helicopter pilot, in which case, you know, throw them in a tank. I don't know. Just, just uh, adjust the metaphor um to your liking but yeah so that's one of the things um <clears throat> that's really one of the things that we've been um working on just in our daily lives and in our gaming habits and they really came through yesterday um we had a new player that was very cool and i mean new to tabletop rpgs so yeah we deckers we busted somebody's cherry i guess that was and unless that's the politically incorrect way of saying things nowadays but you get what we're saying and <clears throat> we don't mean any offense by anything so um so yeah um yesterday we did some stuff now um We've been running one-shots on Saturdays for a little while on every Saturday that I haven't been absorbed into working. And um, I've come to learn a few things about running one-shots over the years and definitely over the past few weeks. Um, when you're in a one-shot campaign, I think the most important thing that I have learned so far is to hurry up and get to the plot. <laughs> that's that's a really big thing now our one shots run a little slower because I tend to group a bunch of strangers together now you can do this at practically any store that runs um um D and D fifth edition gaming league um the adventures league actually and um yeah what is that adventures league there we go yeah um cause um Adventures League is a great way to learn how to play the game and all that jazz. But, um, but yeah, if you don't have a gaming store near you, hey, I totally understand that. It's one of the reasons that we're here. One more time, you have the D&D Adventures League. And, um, yeah, that's a great way to do it. Every week is not a one-shot, but it is a campaign type thing. And the difference between a one-shot and a campaign is a one-shot, you get your character, or you make your character, and that's it. Beginning, middle, end. I explain it to new players like um, a campaign is like an epic um, television show, like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad or Star Trek Deep Space Nine and the shows that came after it. Um, very serialized, very long term with cliffhangers and two-part episodes and all that stuff. And that's why they can run for so long. You know, I've got friends, like serious friends. Um, the Viking, my old co-host for um, Fluff Talk, um, has been running a campaign for... God, 
15 to 17 years, no exaggeration. Um, matter of fact, I think they're playing today, even with that. So, um, you know, but a one-shot is like a movie. Or at least the way that movies used to be before franchises became the default. You know, you would go to the movie, you would watch the movie, you would go home. Maybe there's a sequel one day. Maybe not. But, you know, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off never got a sequel, you know. Um, but it did get a TV show, but stop being that guy. Um, and I'm a big fan of training players how to play in one shots. Um, and they're really great for a quick day of let's get together and do something especially when we don't have much money to spend and um, or if we do have money to spend then we can get together and kind of have a party um, without you know the dancing the drugs and the expectations that somebody's going home with someone else um, but yeah these are the reasons that we get together and we do these things and of, co of course one shots you know they happen once you don't have to worry about the career path of your character um your long-term plans or you can have the one shot get your xp and then take that character to some other game if someone will let you in you know but it it they're always like quick things but what i like and this is what i used to teach them with is very simple um one shots are a great way to learn the rules you want to know how a spell works use it in a one shot um, if you want to know how combat works do it in a one shot <clears throat> you know um, you want to learn how um, how you can start stacking different effects and essentially if you want to learn how to break the game do it in one shots you know um, the difference between one shot characters um, and um, um, campaign characters is really simple you don't have to care as much in a one shot um you know for you guys out there that play a lot of video games um there are still arcades i know that out there thank you but yeah um playing a one shot is like playing an arcade game you put your quarters in you play the game you either put more quarters in to play the game a little longer but when that arcade closes or when you run out of quarters that's it you're done that that's no more of course they take credit cards now but you guys get the metaphor um <clears throat> where a campaign is like um a triple a game on a console or a computer where you save your progress you go on those different career paths all you know you go on those different skill paths and all that stuff so you want to make the ultimate gun you can do that um with 40 50 60 70 hours of gameplay you know i'm looking at you fallout people or the final fantasy people or you know the ones that have those long games i think anthem is doing pretty good right now oh Again, there's no internet at my job, so um, it's hard for me to keep up on stuff. And that's 10, 11 hours a day that I don't get online access that I can use. I'm also including getting to work and, you know, coming home. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this is one of the reasons that I run so many one-shots and that I run one-shots for so many new players because there's really not as much emotional investment in a one-shot campaign because um, for you new guys out there making a character um, when you're new can take anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours and most of that is looking stuff up in this book and any other books you want to pull something from we're talking gaming is a lot of reference a whole lot of reference so I want this spell from this book or I read in this book that I could get this different ability or this different feat um, <clears throat> I want to play a species or a character from this book that's not in the main book but I managed to pick up an additional book and I want to do something else so there's a lot of referencing and a lot of reading and that costs time lots and lots of time but when you do a one shot um, you have the option of doing that um, it's all GM's discretion. Um, when I run the one-shots for Saturdays, the weekly one-shot show, um, one of the big things that I make very clear is we use the main book, just the player's handbook. So we have access to the races and the spells and all that stuff. And I do that <clears throat> for two reasons. One, 
because I have a lot of new players and the best way to make sure that the people you're teaching learn nothing is to give them everything okay everything look at all these books in my background look at all of them. matter of fact look at the other stack of books in my background so if I were to say read all of those and then you can play then I'd just be being a jerk I mean that that's literal gatekeeping and that's a uh, no, no, that's not what we're here for. So I say, this is the book. Go ahead and borrow my copy. <laughs> and um, and let's look through stuff. Um, you know, and I do everything I can to keep the game as streamlined and as simple for new players as it can get. Because at the end of the day, this is gaming by way of creative writing. And I really hate saying what I'm about to say. I do. Ready? Good. I hate saying that the only limit is your imagination. Because that's not true, and it's something that people are tired of hearing. But, streamlining your one-shots is really, really important. You know, so you have to take a lot of stuff off the table. Because if you spend five and a half hours creating the perfect character the perfect idea of this concept that you have if it gets killed on the one shot you get hurt like emotionally it hurts a lot um, when you lose a character um, sometimes that hurt is funny sometimes it's just like oh man I can't believe that happened and other times it's like man now that oh, I can't play this character anymore or at least I can't play it with this group I can take it to another group somewhere if you're lucky for that um, but yeah, putting all the stuff together, especially for a one-shot, you get to be silly. You get to be all the way over the top, and you can take risks with your characters that you normally don't have to take. And the GM, um, the Game Master, can actually cut loose a little bit, because it's a one-shot. You just made the character, so I can throw bigger monsters at you. I can throw hordes of you know, low-level characters. I can be like, yeah, you know what? There are 18 swarms of rats! Ha ha ha! And you don't have to freaking wade through everything and try and kill all the stuff. Sometimes you can run away. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you can run toward the plot, you know? I don't have to have elaborate puzzles, you know? And I'm really big on puzzles and having my players, like, socially game and do all that stuff. But in a one-shot, I can just make a hack-and-slash adventure really quick. Um... And I say really quick, but, you know, I gotta put plot and story and all that stuff in there. But sometimes it's as simple as go through the dungeon, get the thing, kill everything there, or Steve Jackson's Munchkin. Um, and, again, these are good ways to learn the system. Um, it's like single-player story mode on a video game, you know. Um, you get to learn how to use your spells, when to use your spells. You get to know... You know, a lot of people are like, I want to cast Fireball in a cave because they get so determined to cast that really cool spell that they don't realize that they're inside a closed area and they're in a tube and all that other stuff. Um, but in a one-shot, bah, you get to learn all that stuff and you get to take the consequences and you haven't spent any time gathering up special items or going on adventures and getting emotionally attached to to the character that you wrote in the same way that every writer does or every person watching a television show does, you know? I know I'm a big fan of Deep Space Nine, and if something happened to Benjamin Sisko come season three, I would be mad, <laughs> you know? Um, and if Benjamin Sisko was my character, my self-imprint, um, that I'd spent three to five seasons reinforcing that emotional bond with that fictional character we all do it it happens if you don't believe me then why are you waiting for next month for game of thrones to come back huh um you know or you know why is it that some of y'all out there want to be like tyler durden you know what i mean god i'm referencing a 20 year old movie um but um when you run a one shot or when you plan a one shot hey you can do the thing just get in there 
hack and slash, derp a derp a derp a derp look at my adventures, you know, that's when you can turn on the party real quick, or steal stuff from the party, or be the little finger and do the vile betrayal of I told you not to trust me. In fact, most of the time with my regular one shots when I'm running player when I'm running games that don't have a lot of new players, I allow characters to be evil. Because um it's a one shot thing. We're doing it this once. You don't have to be the paragon of virtue. You still can if you want to. But you know, sometimes you gotta get some stuff out. You gotta get some catharsis. So yeah, and that's uh that's the stuff that the one shots are really good for. They're also good for auditioning the people that you want to build a gaming circle around. I mean it, it it's really simple. Um we got a new player yesterday, um or a player that's new to the show yesterday and she was amazing okay seriously like the way that she used the vicious mockery spell was outstanding um it was textbook in a lot of ways but she knew exactly when to do it and how to do it to help out the party and she showed how a bard is really good as a support class but she didn't play it like someone who broke the game and when I say break the game, I can use World of Warcraft as a reference, okay? Whenever you have the option of customizing your characters or, you know, um, it, it's what I like to call the snobbery of efficiency, okay? Um, these are games of creativity. Um, but as you know from playing video games or um, pretty much doing anything where you can customize stuff, there is an optimum customization mode you know there is one build one thing that makes the game as easy as it can be there's the best gun there's the best armor there's the best combination of guns and armor there's the i mean there's so many different so many different games out there where once you get the thing that works every time it's difficult to decide to do it different. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, let's put a quarter in the Wayback Machine to 1997, um, when I still played video games. And, um, <clears throat> I loved a game on the PlayStation 1 called Final Fantasy Tactics. And there was one character class that you busted your butt to work up to, and that was called the Calculator. Because the calculator could do all the best stuff of every other character class. There was also a spell that was called Holy, that high level, um, super high level, I believe, clerics got, where essentially the sky opened up and a holy light came down and smote your enemies. And after a while of playing this game, I turned every member of my tactical party into a calculator and just spammed that spell in every single fight. I mean, the, the game got real easy after that. And it was cool because at the time I was playing the win. Now, what's the story? You know, why did my Geomancer decide to become a calculator and give up their generations of traditions um, with geomantic magic? Like, why would I bother using all these vines and roots to smite my enemy when I can call a deity type thing? You know, a deity that I have no reason to believe in because I'm not from that culture, blah, blah, blah. You see what I mean? The... Um, the cultural context and the story behind the character went away because I found the efficient build. Um, and what this, what this woman did with her bard was she took the standard bard package, but she played her character in a way that she wanted to play her character. It wasn't, um, you are this position, like, earlier on in... God, back in the days of Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 and Dungeons and Dragons um, Second Edition, or AD&D, as we like to call it, um, you had the archetypes that you've come to know in most MMORPGs: your tank, your DPS, your healer. You know, and um, we didn't call it DPS back then because it wasn't damage per second, um, but. You had the dude that did all the fighting, the dude that did all the healing, the dude that stole all the stuff and um, undid all the traps. I mean, it's 
the people became their jobs, essentially. And what a lot of people forgot, and I mean really forgot, <clears throat> about just most of these fantasy-based role-playing games is, um, yeah, thank <laughs> sorry, we got, uh, yeah, we got the Geek Me Out going, the tank, the glass cannon, and the heel bot, exactly, um, but what a lot of people forgot was, like, the clerics can fight, you know, the healers do a lot of damage, not as much as the paladin or the fighter in close quarters, but they can hold their own, and thieves got backstab. You know, they weren't just there to look for traps and to disarm traps so that people could, you know, get through the dungeon and stuff. Like, every single character class could do stuff. They were good at everything and really good at the one thing that, that was um that was specific to that class. You see what I mean? But um, a lot of people start thinking... Um, well, if I'm a bard, my job is to give bardic inspiration and to boost everyone else's stats. But you know, a bard in combat is pretty awesome. Look up the mythology of the bard in Irish folklore, and you'll see most of the stories they told was about when they were going out there, starting bar fights and smiting bad guys. Um, clerics literally kick butt for the Lord <laughs> and then heal people and their counselors and their wives, and they know a lot of lore and things like that. They're not just there to heal the party in a fight. Um, and fighters, dude, fighters can do a lot of things. Um, you know, a lot of fighters have medicine training, so if the cleric is down, that doesn't mean that they can't try to heal people. You see what I mean? And um, my bard from yesterday, she was great. She was really great. She chose not to fight because on her character sheet, let's see, um, I have it here. Um, one of these here is there's I got a lot of paperwork in the studio I'm just letting you know but ah here we go ah, here we go yeah um personality traits on the character sheet right here is um sarcasm and insults are my weapon of choice and she played that to the hilt it was so amazing um, and with the new, with the new edition of Dungeons and Dragons, you actually get bonuses for that. Um, advantage, disadvantage, things like that. So, um, that was good. I mean, I had no choice as a GM, but to award, um, her with an inspiration and, you know, giving all that other stuff, giving all those rewards for role playing and having fun with the game. Um, so yeah, yesterday's session went really good. Again, um, if you want to watch it, really, you know, if you want to watch it today, um, just head over to the Back in the Deck page, or the Back in the Deck YouTube page, and, um, it's the 17 View Weekly One Shot that was four hours ago, and pro tip, um, because I don't have much time to edit today, I've actually got another job I have to go to, um, is um really simple skip the first two hours <laughs> i'm gonna cut those things off and actually streamline that episode but yeah you can uh we had some major major technical problems yesterday but uh yeah skip like the first hour and a half two hours and stuff like that if you just want to see the game and um it was it was some good stuff you know um, it was really good because my veteran player decided to play something that they never play which was um a not very intelligent half orc barbarian. He was there to hit stuff and drink. And um, this guy's had a bad week. So he came in and he's like, mm, Grog wants Grog wants ale. Grog wants this. Oh, you start fight with Grog. Intimidation check? Yeah, it failed. Okay, I smite him. Okay, cool, you can do that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it it was pretty awesome. Like really, really pretty awesome. I was I was really happy about that. And we had a new player playing a tiefling monk, and oh my god, um, I'd never run um, a tiefling monk com combination before. I haven't done that. And um, I haven't really allowed tieflings in because I tend to lean toward the racial discrimination, but it was really good to show that on screen yesterday, because in, in the setting of D&D, &D, um, tieflings are discriminated against because of the way that they look. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to play that card out of that deck. But um but um the player did the research. He 
he knew what was coming and it was cool and I got to punish a few racists so that was fun um and yeah it really came down to um it really came down to tieflings get a whole lot of very cool abilities for their species and yeah it was it was messed up it was really messed up um so I was really happy about um I was really happy about the way that the game went and most importantly excuse me the players had fun so that was that was a really good thing and at the end of the day I'm not going to lie I was hoping to kill one of them um I was really hoping to kill one of them and if you want to find out whether or not I did you'll have to go and check the link but um but yeah I was really hoping to to kill a player or two or even three but I had to be fair about it so I didn't do the rocks fall everyone dies and I didn't attack them with a dragon you know I kept all the threat levels within fair boundaries and stuff like that and man adamantium rage that's all I gotta say Just adamantium rage rage um so that was some good stuff um but again this has been a day and you know um it was it was some pretty good stuff so that's what that's what we had doing and the fact that i'm talking to you guys about this today is exactly the reason that we run games because as you can see on my face i'm having a good time remembering what we did and that is why role players spend so much time role playing that is why we do the things we do it's fun in the moment we get good memories after the fact and it allows us to spend time with a whole lot of friends. A whole lot of friends. You know, um, and the friends that we build are the ones that stay with us for decades. And you don't have to take my word for it. I challenge you to go to any game store that you have access to. If you can get to a brick and mortar store, especially an older one that's been there for a while, and just look at the gaming tables or talk to some of the gamers and they'll be happy to tell you oh yeah I've been playing with this guy for five years or I've been playing with this group for six or seven years like these are my friends and you know so you don't actually have to already be friends to start gaming if you join a gaming group you'll eventually have those friends <laughs> you know I say that with you know a 70% probability because you know not everybody is a cool person you know, God knows I'm not. Mm. But yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's really that whole gig with that. Um, so let me talk about these things. Now, these things, again, a lot of the time, there are, um, yeah, I'm happy with these. Ha 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 ha. A lot of the times, there are, um, people like to use grids, okay? And, um, yeah, these things. This is a combat mat. Alright, this is a combat mat. And people use them for traveling across long distances. That's what the hex is for. Um, this thing was like $16, $17. Somewhere between $17 and $25 at a gaming store. Or you can find them on Amazon. Um, and I'm a big fan of grids because I spent so long um, in tournament gaming for miniatures that I got tired of the arguments of microns because they matter and they can change the whole term. Oh, screw it. I'm not that guy. Um, but <clears throat> this looks a little boring when it's on a table. So a lot of people do a lot of decorations and things like that. They, um, they use different materials to make them. They flock them. They do a whole bunch of stuff to make them look like terrain. And there's other stuff that you can get from stores, like um, pre-printed um, pre battle tiles for about 40 or 50 bucks. And they have art on them, and they're gridded and all that stuff. I've been trying to make our own grids here um, for, the, um, for the merchandise um, for the merchandise site that's going up on the website but man precision work takes precision and i can't afford to hire a company so that's a thing um but these things these things um a lot of people paint miniatures i mean i paint miniatures um we have here ow now i've been working on this little lady for months Okay, this is 
This was one of the main characters from the game plot yesterday. Okay, yes, this is a drider, half drow, half spider. And um, I have been working on painting her for a long time. Reason it's been a long time, because she's very small, is it because I'm into a whole bunch of detail and I want to make her look realistic? No, I, know, I stay in my lane on that one. It's because I don't have a whole lot of time, okay? Um, Full-time job, um, also running this company, also adulting and trying to tend to my home life, like doing chores, doing dishes, doing laundry, you know, things like that. So I don't have a whole lot of time to sit down with a magnifying glass and okay? But <coughs> using one of these, uh, huh? Using one of these? You guys see that? You see that? Yeah, it's a penny. That is on the other side of the spectrum. So what do I do? What do I do? Um, when I want to help with the immersion of games. And the answer comes with these little guys. These little guys right here. Now, I'm not making sh I'm I want to make absolutely clear I am not at all against painting miniatures okay I happen to enjoy it it's one of the things I do when I'm when I'm stressed out and I have the time um, but when you try and do little precision work like that when you're as tired as I am you're going to do nothing but make mistakes and um, frustrate yourself to the point where you want to throw it across the room and I have <laughs> um, but how do you do this stuff when you're trying to get the game, um, the games that you're trying to run or play in order? And what I've come to learn is um, I went to elementary school and paper models are really good. So what is this? This, if you can get a good sense of that. Okay, this, as you can tell, my lines aren't straight and that's fine. And what we did with these things is um you know we looked up some art and again you can do this um just don't put them up for sale or anything like that um one of the things that i did was i said you know what i want to make um a little elf or, or no i, I want to make dwarves because i like dwarves so i looked up dwarven paladin on google and I found that, you know, uh, yeah, we can find any one of these little guys. Uh, here's a standard guy. Yeah, look at that guy. Ooh, no, I like him. I like him. Yeah, that guy looks like, yes, yes, ah, oh, look at me. And, you know, we download the picture. And then um, after we download the picture, um, yeah, Dwarven cl or Cleric. Um... Then, we can go in to our other free software. If y'all got, um, if you guys, oh, hey, thanks, Vixen, for giving us, uh, for giving us 50 bits. Um, you know, if you guys are like us, you know, you're using the free stuff. You know, I'm just using GIMP 210. Um, if you've got Photoshop, then good for you. <laughs> um, and then we just open the thing. Do, do, do. Well, first, um, we're going to give a new file at... Oh, look at that. First, since I'm not that guy, <laughs> I'm going to change that to inches because I don't know how many pixels are on a piece of paper. And we're going to go 8.5 by 11 because that's the size of a piece of paper. <laughs> Hang on, i got to turn that back to a piece of paper. Um... There we go. All right. And then make sure we have our little pointer tool. And we're going to open up as layers. Um, where is that? Oh, that's in there. Download Dwarven Cleric. Dwarven Cleric. All right. Maybe it went to the desktop. I told you I'm not that guy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're going to open that guy. Hey, yeah, let's make this at least the full size of a piece of paper. Then we're going to scale this guy down. Scale to inches. 
we're going to make the thing one inch wide. Oh, always make sure to um, unclank or unclack that. Actually, no, you know what? That's good. One inch by 1.4 because he's a dwarf, so he's going to be a little stout. Um, we would normally make it one inch by two inches like this guy one inch wide by two inches tall but he's a dwarf so we can make him um a little short now that, that's perfectly fine and then here comes the magic okay we are going to scale this down 50 or no uh scale it or you know just we're going to look back at the whole piece of paper okay we're just going to move this guy over here and then you see how I'm putting them in the top left corner? Because we can. Now we're going to right click on that. We are going to go over to layer. And then we are going to transform the layer by flipping it vertically. Why would you flip it vertically, you ask? Well, it's right there where it needs to be. And now we're going to go back to layer again. And we're going to duplicate the layer. Okay. And now we're going to drag the new one right underneath the old one and then we're going to take that layer transform it one more time flip it vertically all right and now <clears throat> here is my key we're going to go over into that little area over there and we're going to merge these two layers together all right so that we have one piece and then control shift d to duplicate that layer and make another one uh, we'll offset it just a little bit and then we're gonna do it again or if you really want to be that guy we're just gonna keep merging down the layers merge it down merge it down merge it down oops control Z okay so now we've got a whole bunch of these guys right and now we're gonna shift control D to duplicate that layer offset it just a bit yeah and yeah why not control shift D offset that all the way down here boom boom do it again okay boom boom do we have space for one more yeah we do shift control D do it again Boom, 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 boom. Shift, control, D, do it again. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and now, just because we are all about efficiency of space and getting as much out of our materials as possible, we're just going to highlight two of them. Oh, wait, control, C to copy and now paste it as new layers we're up here oh no sorry forgot to control a the oh no there we go all right and we're just going to take these two guys put them over here fill in some space shift control d yeah Okay, yeah, that, that's what we can do. We'll just move these little guys over just a tiny bit. Yeah, there we go. And go back up the thing. Shift Control D. Take it all the way back up. Boom. Okay. And then we flatten the image. And there we go. We can print that out on a piece of paper. And it'll give us something that looks like this. <laughs> okay, now you guys can see I glued this to a manila envelope. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we glued this to a manila envelope. And then we just cut these things out. What's really important <coughs> is always making sure that we're going to take our little knight over here that the heads are facing each other then we cut we fold that guy in half 
and we get one of these. So it looks like that on both sides. Isn't that fun? <laughs> All right, now with this little thing that you guys just saw me make, um, now if any of my players, for any reason, <laughs> you know, for any reason, um, ends up trying to assault a dwarven army, all I have to do is print that out, cut out those little pieces, which, you know, I can do on my lunch break at work, and, um, <clears throat> and then I've got a bunch of dwarven confetti. Isn't that fun? Dwarven confetti. Now, ooh, drop the thing. <clears throat> now, here comes the rough part, okay? I took a penny, okay? Take a look at the penny. All right, you don't have to use a penny, but, you know, somebody also has a bunch of stuff. Um, and a coffee stir stick. And I cut out the length of a penny. And I glued them to the stir stick with a little bitty, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, with a little bitty space in between so that my little guy can slide right in between the stir sticks. Now, if you're like me and you're totally broke <clears throat> or you grew up broke, <clears throat> what you can do is, um, hang on, I'm going to use a different guy. Yeah, what you can do is find a friend that's going to say a Starbucks <laughs> and when they get their little cup of coffee, you can say, bring me back a stir stick or two. Yeah, and, um, this many. And then you can cut them up, and you can make your own. And these things stand solidly by themselves. They don't fall over too easily because of the weight of the penny. Okay? There we go. And, you know, if you come from one of those rich suburban families, you can totally use nickels. Um, you know, or if you've got washers or something laying around. But, yeah, and, um... Again, I've got this many laying around, and when I print out that dwarf, again, um, yeah, and again, this is good for goblins <laughs> and other goblins and death knights, and I've got cultists and all that other stuff in case, um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, you know, the chat is just killing it today. Um, yeah, if, um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, like seriously, the chat is just killing it today. They're sitting up and they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Freaking, they wobble, but they don't fall down, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, and again, this is something that you can do with the kids, you can do yourself. It's all good stuff, and it saves you the two dollars and fifty cents or even the one dollar um of buying the many and again if you're like me and you don't have the time to paint that's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine um what i'll probably end up doing is when i put this section um on the youtubes <laughs> i might just leave a link to the dwarven thing that i just made in front of you guys and as you can see um do, do nope 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 I want it yeah and matter of fact I might I'm gonna make this a PDF but you can make it a PNG or whatever and um, boom there we go so if in and again I'm this stuff isn't for sale or anything because I don't know who owns that art but for your own groups for your home thing you know um yeah for your own home thing you can do that for days, and all you got to do... Ooh, man, that is a way too big. Um, boo boo Yeah, there we are. Yeah, and all you really got to do with this thing is... Look at that. There you go. So, slide that in your printer, and you've got your meeples. Um, send me an email if you want me to send you a copy of this. So that's what I'll do. I'll just, boom, done. Um... But yeah, I mean, that that's that's something that you can do, and that happens really quickly. It's all done. That's out there. And um, you can use that for your games. And again, I'm really a big fan of using them for, like I said, goblins, um, kobolds. Um, when, I'm, when I'm running <coughs> an inner city game or 
a modern city game. Um, I like finding little art for like gang members or sprites from things like old video games like Streets of Rage or Final Fight and going, all right, yeah, that looks like a punk rock gangster from, you know, the 1980s. Look at all of that Schumacher like green screen or not green screen, um, neon and saying, all right, that's what you guys get attacked with. And that's a really quick and easy way to um, get a mini and do the thing. Now, here is the warning. <laughs> The pennies take three to five minutes, um, yeah, to make. Although you can go buy them from a game store. I remember um, Steve Jackson Games, got years ago, put out these things called Cardboard Heroes. And how can I put this? Um, engineers are fantastic people. Why? Because they have the capability of making just about anything, but they have the common sense to just go buy it if they don't feel like um, making it themselves. Like, why would they design? Um, why would they design a piece of metal that you can hit with another piece of metal that will go into a piece of wood and keep them together? Just go buy a nail if you can afford the nail. Um, but yeah, and again, the, but again, these things. If you've got no, if you've got more time than money. Like I used to, now I don't have either. <laughs> um, and you can easily just um, find one of your friends that has that penny jar. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, yeah, again, um, thank you very much, chat. Yeah, we got uh, over in NP City. There we go. Yeah, over in NP City, we've got, um, ooh, man, look at that. Nope, nope, we're not wrong one. Um, yeah, over in MP City, uh, we've got the Geeks Meow saying that Paizo makes them for Starfinders. They're called pawns. And that means they're probably made for Pathfinder too. Um, yeah, and that that's that's really, you know, again, I don't know how much they run for, but probably not more than ten dollars. Um, or you can go to a staples and see if they have little paper holders for these for like five or ten, but if you're a kid and you're watching this and you don't have five or ten dollars, um, you can ask somebody to get you some stir sticks from Coffee Bean or It's a Grind or um, Starbucks or whatever geek and mortar or <laughs> whatever um, brick, not geek, brick and mortar store that you've got coming out with that. Um, and everybody knows somebody with a jar or... Um, with a jar or some kind of container full of pennies that they're never going to use. They're never going to spend because everybody thinks I'm going to roll those up and take them to the bank and blah, 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 blah. 12 years later, they're just still there and the pennies are overflowed and they're sitting on the thing. So yeah, just take, you know, or give them a quarter and get 25 pennies back. It's not that hard. Matter of fact, a roll of pennies is 50 cents. So if you got two quarters, if you find two quarters in the car, just go get the pennies and get the stir sticks and you know you might need parental supervision because I used um, wire cutters and scissors to cut down the whole the stick thing and um, if you really want to make it look a lot less put together just throw some paint on it doesn't matter what color paint I mean they're for holding little pieces of paper it's not that big deal and that adds a little bit more of a dimension to your games um, and it makes it so that your parents don't have to spend a whole lot of money or you don't have to spend a whole lot of money because this is the 21st century and most houses have a color printer. So um, I printed these out on sticker paper that I got from UPS um, or you can print them out on regular paper and glue them to a manila envelope just to make them a little bit stronger and to make sure that you don't have to waste an entire sheet of paper every time you run a game. And again, if you lose them, blah! It's a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, you can just make a little bit more. You know, so that that's where I'm going from that. But we started late today. I've already run a lot over, and I've got a 100-mile drive um, to make ahead of me, and I don't even know what the weather's like. I think it's an okay day, but I've got to go um, way, way down into some hostile territory for wizards. Um, so... Um, this is where I say um, goodbye, I'll do, I'll be saying goodbye, but um, if you guys um, want a copy of that or you want to drop down like, you know, where else could I find some art or have any questions about that, well, that's an easy, easy thing, like easy peasy, 
Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And, um, you know, I definitely have to say hello, or thank you guys, over in NP City. Thanks a lot, Deck Mob. You really do actually make this, you know, worthwhile when I gotta do all this stuff. And, um, again, drop us a line at any of those places that we brought up a little bit earlier. You know, on the big blue wall! And if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like or have the hobbies you like because of the circumstances of your birth, being race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget. You just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying see you guys a little bit later, and thanks for popping by the Game Gallery.